This UFL Week Two Picks Edition of the Sports Game and Podcast is brought to you by Cut. Cut is a peer-to-peer social betting platform that's U.S. based and available in 40 states. Head to cut.com. That's K-U-T-T dot com and use promo code SGPN for a 10% deposit bonus. We're also brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Play their fantasy pick them for a chance to win 100 X in NBA, MLB. NHL, college basketball, and more. Sign up today using promo code SGPN to get a hundred percent deposit match. This is Clay Harbor. You're listening to SGPN. Let it ride. I am an East Carolina fan. To the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean, second the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan, real money Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dog. I'm in a man's box right now. Oh, you are? Nice. There should, could be some residue over here. Box residue. <laughs> there was some, some bet detectiving. Who knows? Yes. Uh, we are here talking United Football League, coming off an amazing heater. Joining us on the line, the only guy who didn't go eight no. You know him from the UFL Gambling <laughs> Podcast, Mr. Colby Dent, aka Pick Dundee. What's happening, Colby? Oh, hey, sorry. Um uh what's going on? Let me tell well, you. What about- was that? Would you like to join my neighborhood? Um, what, 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 what? Mr. Um, Rogers. Uh, uh, there's a visual gag for those listening to this audio podcast. Yeah. Colby <laughs> is reading the the book, The War on Football. Saving America's game, Sean, which um, you know, I, I do my part. Uh do you, all right? Um ask yourself that when you go to sleep tonight. Uh, I'm doing great though, guys. Uh, I did go, uh, <laughs> I did go undefeated on my picks ATS. You guys got very fortunate on your. You, we should have had the same records on the totals. We should have so? the same records. On How the- does that work? How can we have the same records if we're on different sides? Well, the Birmingham game, you got so so lucky. Blew it, blew it. Misses a field goal, but not only that, three. He's got his name, blew it right in there. Three red zone turnovers. Uh, or I think one was at like the 25, but two red zone turnovers and one at like the 25 yard line. But I'm doing great besides that big, but you guys got fortunate. You got fortunate. <laughs> uh, feeling really good about my Brahma's uh, 14 to one future. Very sharp. They won outright. Colby, we did hit our Michigan Panthers, San Antonio Brahma's two team money line parlay. Hopefully your book wasn't scared and, and let you actually parlay that thing. That was sweet. Uh, Discord off to an zero and four start. If you I, dare mm, to fade mm, our uh, picks, I, I'd like to take this time to uh, you know, I I know you guys weren't because you what? guys don't really you know I, I've I've been arguing in the trenches about uh, the <laughs> USFL's product being better than the XFL's product for oh, well, a solid a solid uh f- you know 15, 16 mm-hmm. months. Um, I can't do this right now. How about 6.1 yards a rush? 6.1 yards a rush for uh for both you know, the Michigan Panthers and the uh and the Birmingham Stallions just run. running it right down their fucking throat. Just run the damn ball shot. I mean, so wait, is 6. Point, is that is 6.1 yards per carry good cuz it highlights good <laughs> running football or is it bad because it highlights soft poor sloppy tackling? I think it's Ooh. a little bit of both, but either way, like the XFL, I, I look and I, I, we just, the product was the product that they went out and hired four coaches last year that didn't really have head coaching experience, all former players. They were going for the, the star attraction stuff. And I thought that the product suffered because of that. Uh, meanwhile, when you looked at the USFL, I thought the USFL was just a much better, didn't have the fans, but just had better football. And I, I was, uh, you know, in many arguments over the over the past year about it, hey, dude. Birmingham would fuck up anybody in that league. I was like, Detroit wasn't even one of the better teams, and it took down it took down one of their best teams. So, uh, who's who's Detroit? Michigan, you mean? Yeah, same thing. Oh, okay, the, the Panthers. Yeah, this is embarrassing. Well, I'll tell you what's embarrassing is Colby is uh, is he angry about spring football? 
I I I know what he's getting into because I've been uh, going at war with the uh, the the pussies over at the United Football League subreddit Whoa. who won't let me. I tried to post the episode oh, no. on Thursday in the United Football. Uh, Reddit. Oh, no. uh, they said, "Sorry, you can only self-promote on Tuesdays." I go, "This is a dumb policy. The game lines don't come out till later in the week. We don't know matchups, uh, injuries. Like, if you're gonna let people self-promote their stuff, let them do it later in the week when we know more about who's actually playing and what's going on in these fucking games." Uh, it wouldn't they don't know do- ball, Sean. They're Magic the Gathering nerds. So I made a calendar reminder that on Tuesday I would go back and post. Our episode, fortunate for us, uh, Kramer and I both went eight and zero, and I, I uh, in the title I said went eight and zero, picked every side in total correct. <laughs> Tried to share this with the audience of this uh, subreddit on Thursday, but the mods didn't allow it because they hate free money. Um, that oh. got removed, <laughs> <laughs> and then I called them fascists because they wouldn't. I go at least let the subreddit vote. If this is a democracy, let the subreddit vote on what day we're allowed to fucking self promote our show. I go, we're the biggest show talking about this godforsaken league. You should be happy that we're talking about this. You should be embracing gambling. Uh, there's some UFL purists in the in the subreddit. I don't like all the gambling talk. Well, you can kiss your fucking pretty little league goodbye if you don't like gambling talk, because that's why people are watching football. In particular, spring football. But g- getting to the point that got me over here, one of the United Football League uh, subreddits rules is uh, six tribalism slash toxic XFL versus USFL mindsets will not be tolerated. Um, and I go back and forth. I go, why you? Why go? Why do you make it Tuesday? Just explain to me why Tuesday. It feels very arbitrary. And the guys go, uh, it's a tradition. I go. The league started last week. I go. No, it's a lot of the same mods from XFL and USFL. I go. What are those leagues? Are you embracing tribalism? Why well, his own rules against dude? Them. And 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 wow. why? To me, like I don't know. I wasn't alive for it, but I hear stories from my uncles, my my dad, and stuff about the AFL versus NFL, and that creates buzz. Why would you have that? Why, like, why, why not have that? I don't understand. No. I mean, one, I think you're kind of, uh, I, well, Colby's right here, but I, I think you're kind of a loser to have a hardcore opinion on which one's better. But to your point, <laughs> if if it's going to create rivalries, if it's going to create, yes. hey, us versus them, if it's going to create bad blood, that's great for a league. You should be embracing uh, team <laughs> hatred. You should hate the other seven teams in the United Football League. Oh, well, the uh, other and, four. The uh, other four. Well, I don't want it to be. I th- I'm worried Colby slipping into that like uh, you know SEC conference mentality of hey whatever's good for the USFL conference <laughs> is good for the USFL yeah, conference. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't want to no, see that. I, Colby. Look, I don't even like Michigan. They play in a fucking dome, all right. <laughs> but but I I I just to me like I wanted the XFL and USFL to both succeed, right? I, right. I think the more the more football games we have, if anything, you know, we had 16 teams a year ago. Now we only have eight. We have less games. It sucks. Um, but you know, I, I wanted it to succeed, but but your lay football fan, no, especially you your lay ultimate yeah, I did. Your lay alt football fan, um, you know, it's like they don't know the sport. Like I get it, USFL had no fans. The XFL product looked better on TV, but not the actual game. They were having like they were doing gimmick ass plays. Like the actual game, it was pretty evident to me that the USFL had had much better line of scrimmages. And that showed week one of of the UFL. Well, let's let's uh, kind of rally and let's figure out how we're going to use this to our advantage because I I'm still sticking. I know you don't like them because they're in the XFL, but the Brahmas uh, quality win and at fourteen to one, got to be enjoying my Brahmas future. Hey, if you're looking to uh, go head to head, put your money where your mouth is. Maybe you're a USFL diehard like Colby, and you want to steal some rubes. Uh, money that's trying to get down on the XFL. You can do it over at Cut, the ultimate put your money where your mouth is platform. I love the personal aspect of Cut. Uh, unfortunately, I had Indiana State on the money line. I got an amazing price though. <laughs> Those lose. It was minus one oh nine at Cut earlier, like a couple days ago. Meanwhile, every other major sports book, Indiana State covered at minus one fifty four. So what it did was now I granted I didn't win the bet, but a lot of people that were sweating out three and a half. 
when they started falling apart, they didn't even get to enjoy that last minute of Indiana State completely shitting the bed. I got to enjoy that because my money line play was still alive until that last shot. So, um, in, in fuck Indiana State, but cut is pretty awesome. Go to KUTT.com to download the app today and or uh yeah, you can just check it out in your app store, use the promo code SGPN, get you the 10% deposit bonus. Uh, I I just you want if you want a quick update on the uh liquidity situation for me, Sean. Someone did take a hundred percent of my <clears throat> my beautifully priced Yukon game where I offered up a plus twelve Ooh. for someone who wanted a little uh, juiced up Alabama side. No one has grabbed the NC State money line yet. Really? I'm offering a four to one money line out there. We're not talking He's about pennies. <laughs> um, I, I mean, come and get it, Colby. Come get cut, motherfucker. I, I, I feel like there's a few things we should address. Right. Was that uh you know, first off, the the UFL enterprises they got they over the past week they uh they they bought the the name rights or of the Canton Bulldogs, which was an original oh, NFL team. Oh right? yeah, it was. I've been to the Hall of Fame. Yes, yes. Uh, that I've been. Me and Patty C been screaming that for about thirty fucking years. Um, but uh, then uh, they hey, let also, me break, but hold on yeah. because it, it. I know the Canton Bulldogs because of that beautiful, beautiful spreadsheet display they have in Canton, where they have every team ever. Listed out and then like by year. Kramer, and we, we love football. We've made multiple <laughs> pilgrimages to the Hall of Fame. Yes. Colby, have you gone to the Hall of Fame? We gotta get you to the Hall of Fame. No, I've gone to the college football hall of fame. They started oh. the sport. It's in Atlanta, Georgia. <laughs> um, but uh but anyway, um <laughs> the Canton Bulldogs were purchased and then they, they also issued for the Nashville, I believe it was the Tuners. The Nashville okay. Tuners. Uh, it feels I could be like wrong. we got to look. We should tuners, look that up. Yeah. We should look that up before you just say it blatantly on our airwaves. We don't. Well, we have no. We have no idea what a tuner well, is. We also had a guy get uh, get cut for spitting on a player allegedly. Yes. Oh, that no. was uh, that did happen. We also saw a fake punt uh, thrown to the center, which was an amazing play. Great, very athletic play by everyone. Just involved. awesome. I, I'm with Sullivan here. I'm with the bet detective. He's on the oh. case on this one. What do you mean? He got tackled at like the two yard line or the one yard line, <laughs> and they never reviewed that. They never reviewed that. Oh, one hundred percent, you're wrong. I watched that live. I said, "Oh my god, look at that athletic play well, to score the touchdown." The he bet, knows that he doesn't live in infamy if he doesn't score that touchdown there. He the bet detective's he, side is that is that the player could have at the five or six, and he didn't. I say he was down at like the one and a half yard line. They never gave us a side shot. Um, because and the clock would have ran out, I think, or I don't know. First down might have stopped no. the clock, I think. But um, but their short yardage has been had been shit all game. But hey, enjoy it. Like I like to see the big man score, but it's uh, bet detective it screams marketing ploy. Mm. <laughs> all right, I'm sending the... I'm sending this to producer. Josh. You have we a gotta, screenshot, right? Oh well, no, well we got to just rewatch this. Yeah, all um, right, let's let's play that Colby. I thought Kobe would be embracing the one cool thing. Oh no, I loved it. I loved I, I loved the the third read too on it. We but can't just allow him to say blasphemy like this. Right? Every they, play is supposed to be reviewed. They didn't CJ, review that one. CJ and 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 what do you mean? We got Dean Blandino out there. Oh, I was good. He, God. Dean Blandino made my list of uh, thing my key takeaways from week one in the UFL. Kind of UFL. Leg, and now look at this. Now, what is the rule? Isn't isn't normally a center a legal man downfield? He, he's or? not. He's not a center on this play. No, he's, he's not a center on this play. Yeah, yeah, he's lined yeah. up a tackle. Oh, okay. Oh, great Catches play! It. Great broken tackle. Oh, he's, he's definitely, definitely oh, at he's the got one it. yard he's line. Extended. The ref no, is standing not. right there, who has the best view what of have, the play. What do you think he's gonna do? What do you think what he's gonna do? do? Yeah, I mean, do you think? You, are you claiming the fix is in? Well, no. Yeah, I mean, the bet the Texas case is interesting. He said they could have tackled oh, him at yeah, like the he's seven. In. No, he's, he's never, no, he's not. Rewind that. Bring it back a little bit. Knee goes down right there. Knee goes no. down before. No, before you just, he's wearing dark pants. But why he, would you not extends. look at that? Why would you not look at that? That's a touchdown. Look he, at that. Look at no. that right there. You're getting it from this angle, man. You're getting was, it from this show angle. me the other. Show yeah. me the other angle. That, they never was, showed us it. That's my point. Colby was rooting for for uh, Bruce Willis to die and die hard. 
<laughs> pretty sure. Bro. Pretty sure. Brahma's had a uh, Brahma's had a timeout. They would have scored there anyway. Uh, uh, Noah wants us to address Colby's camera. Colby has a new fancy non blurry oh, camera. It looks nice. L- very crisp. You can see how the shelf is slightly unlevel. But see how um, young he is. Other than that. I don't think they would have scored there because their 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 reds their their goal line or or power package was ass all game. But oh wow, I would just like to see it. Maybe he did score, but I'm saying I would Maybe. like to see that reviewed. How do you ignore that? That was a huge play in the game, and they never even looked at it. Every scoring place, but every place push be reviewed, let alone scoring plays. I think the bet detectives onto something. <laughs> all right, come back with the other angle. You know, uh, it were like Zapruder's film. We're gonna we're gonna see from. Oh, I angle. got an angle from behind here. Hold on. Okay. Oh, he's not down. He hundred percent. All I'm, right, Ryan. I stake up. my. I'm gonna stake my. Uh, I'm, oh, I'm pull sorry. that up while you're doing that. Of course, everyone, uh, head over to GameTime.co or download the <laughs> GameTime app. Get you ready for UFL action. Maybe you want to go uh, check out the Final Four. Uh, maybe you want to check out some MLB early action, NBA playoffs right around the corner. Whatever it is. So many ways to get down on some game time tickets. Your go to app for last minute tickets. Uh, it's made for mobile. A last minute plan's never been easier. Maybe you got some people on the fence. Maybe you're telling yourself, I'm only going to the national championship game if NC State wins. You can wait to the last second and get your tickets over on game time. You get the game time guarantee, which means you can find cheaper tickets in the same section, same row for less. Game time will refund you 110% of the difference. GameTime.co promo code SGPN. Do you remember? Uh, I guess about a year ago this weekend, Decker is celebrating in our office and then oh, yes. uh, deciding to get on a plane and go watch his San Diego State Aztecs uh, get their ass beat in the national championship. That was unfortunate. Yeah. UConn is a is a freaking buzzsaw. Oh, they are. All right, we we ready to give out some winners? Let's go. Uh, Colby, you ready? I've been ready for this my whole life. <laughs> It's good to hear, Colby. Uh, all right, early game on Saturday, and we're back to doing that thing where we have a game in the morning and a game at night. Uh, Let's you, talk uh, about that. Fail. Yeah. So, I agree. Why, why, why I not? Why not? One <laughs> like I was looking at the CFL Week One schedule. Kudos to the CFL. They do a Thursday night game, a Friday night game, a Saturday night game, a Sunday night game. What What are we doing here? What are we doing here? The The, the second Saturday game goes right up against the Final Four. I I would say yeah maybe you don't have to wait until the afternoon to do that May, maybe also it's like they go out of their way to have people not watch these games <laughs> like, like why why I don't get it having all no one four- else is using the arena nothing else is aired uh, I mean it's like infomercials what are we talking it's, about it's very weird strategy uh, the San Antonio Brahmas who. By, you know, as Sean's been touting, the future looking great. Uh, players coach Wade Phillips, the air raid, um, AJ Smith, I think is his name. Everything seemed to be uh, going as we planned. They get the upset win. Now they're laying a point and a, and a half on the road against a very good Memphis Showboats team that got a nice road win against what we think is going to be a good Houston Roughneck, Roughnecks defense. What minus one twenty five for the Brahmas? Forty and a half is the total. Uh, plus one hundred five for Memphis. Memphis is a contender. Uh, this is a disrespectful over adjustment of a line. Uh, I I think I think this is one of the easiest plays on the one, board. One of these teams has Vinny Papali. One does it. I mean, the handicap can be that simple. I'm a little worried about Memphis's inability, the Showboats' inability to run the ball. Only thirty two rushing yards, but I think. You, how can you get away from the uh, the spring experience of Ch- of uh, Case Kukas? Two hundred four passing yards. Uh, lead actually led the team in rushing yards with fifteen. Again, nothing super fancy, but they play good defense, uh, and you know they get enough points. Put up eighteen. Uh, their their defense was pretty good. I mean, it was interesting. Both the Brahmas and the Showboats both held their opponents to only twelve points. Again, I like the Brahmas. I'm excited about my uh, future bet here, but like, you know, some of the stuff not sustainable on Ooh. offense with that uh, trick play. Also, we got very lucky. I mean, Colby didn't even bring it up with the under. The defenders had scored a touchdown, but then there was some penalty action. The ball got pushed all the way to the back, and there was a fumble <laughs> in it. So it uh, the Brahmas 
game, I think, ended a little bit more lo- looking like bit a of blowout. An outlier. Well, it looks more like a blowout than it actually was. And yeah, um, I mean, Colby, are, you're not riding the Brahmos wave, are you? No, no, they're in the they're in the XFL. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, the the this first off, this is at the Liberty Bowl, the best stadium in the whole. Oh league. yeah. All right, best stadium in the whole fucking <laughs> league. And uh, look, Carnell Lake in that defense. I mean, they held now Houston's offense. I do think is ass, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see. I think the defense is also very good. Now they yeah. couldn't run the ball very well, which was concerning because they have very good running backs, <laughs> but the, the, the defense held them to what? 174 total yards. That is like Carnal Lake. He studied under Dick LeBeau for about 10 years. So I, that's LeBeau like right there. Um, I think Memphis at home, they have, they have the better quarterback too. And I also think if you look at what AJ Smith did this last year with the Houston roughnecks out the gate, him and Wade Phillips were throwing the ball some, but look at that second half adjustments. Greg Williams actually held them to zero points. Essentially their, their only score came on the interception, right? I don't know that that's sustainable, especially when they have San Antonio's gotten the best. I think maybe the best player in the league and Anthony McFarlane at running back, but they barely run them. They run the air raid. They barely run them. Uh, so if they're going to continue to do that, where they don't give him a, a bulk of carries, I think Memphis beats him. I think Memphis is going to force some turnovers. Chase Garbers probably hasn't seen a defense this aggressive in, in, in a bit. Um, I'm on the, I'm on the showboats to win this thing outright. And, I mean, and, and to, you know, kind of the opposite of the San Antonio score. Houston scored late to make this look a little closer than it was. Pretty dominant performance. No, um, they never trailed. They never trailed. Yeah. Memphis was up the whole game. Yeah. And it was like 18 6 for pretty pretty late into the game. So I think this is a great opportunity to get kind of uh two contrarian public views. Uh do we have do we have betting data on this, Sean? Have we uh are, are the VEASAN betting splits covering UF? Are they bothering to track? Oh, they are. Oh yes. Let's uh, go. Let's see. Ooh, yes, there's three bets on the showboats. <laughs> Brahmas are Brahmas are catching 64% of the bets, but the showboats are getting 71% of the handle sharps like us. Showboat all over. sharps. I think the, the over, the over hits here no, too. No, what? <laughs> yeah. Colby unders again. No, they didn't no. learn anything all over the unders. <laughs> they didn't learn Any, anything. Anything 40 and above is an under in this league until, until like week four. And I'm going to, uh, take no, the no, max. No, no. They're going to let me bet on this week as well. Are you uh, seeing a 40 and a half Ryan? Uh, Yeah, I guess I should. Uh, let's see the, cause the, that's what the total's at. I like the under again, because I, I, I like the Memphis showboats defense. I think it's pretty good to your point, Colby. Like they shut them out in the second half uh, and, and Memphis, the showboats <laughs> offense isn't amazing. I don't think what the Brahmas did is very sustainable. This is like, 17, 14 showboats all day. I don't understand any. When, of this. When, when you really consider that the Brahmas basically scored zero offensive points in the second half, and then their touchdown came on a trick play on the on the offense on the first half, uh, or one of their scores was on a trick play. Um, is that sustainable? Now they go on the road. That believe it or not, San Antonio had a decent crowd. I, uh, I, I yeah. agree, and I, I think that's why this is a great like you know team going from great situation and and kind of paper blowout to playing a team that looks like won a close game but actually dominated coming home. And by the way, the lines moved out. It's minus two for the Brahmas. Uh, Sean, oh, nice. forty and a half is still the total. Let's get let's update all our Memphis plus I, two. I, I kind of think this. I feel like this is the same story as the last time we talked about Memphis last week, uh, not getting any respect. Quarterbacks matter in spring football, big time. All they right. got to they, they got to run the ball better though. I mean, Darius sure. Victor, Titus Swin, Trey Williams are all stud backs. They, but they to better, your point, but yeah. to your point, I mean, I the air raid tends to look figured out at times, um, and so I wonder how they're going to look in game two on the road in in a much in a more difficult uh, situation. All right. Well, I was talking uh, about Memphis, but yes, oh, yes, yeah. Five p.m. Uh, again. This is the this is an interesting um, scheduling opportunity. Uh, what time are the final four games? Uh, exactly I mean, the second one, I believe, is exactly five thirty nine. Yeah. Like, so they're they're going head to head. 
They're going head to head with the final four with the Arlington Renegades. Why not put it on tonight? They're so and stupid. The, and the St. Louis Battle Hawks. 309 and 549. So you can imagine <laughs> what if NC State is ready to shock the world at Purdue uh versus Purdue oh. and, and get to the national championship. Oh wait, gotta honey, click over. We gotta watch the Renegades kick off. What are I can they just, doing? You can just see the headlines. Not everyone I, has eight TVs. I can see the headline: UFL <laughs> Week Two bombs. It's like, hey, it didn't need the bomb. It, if you would just use a little, no, it, little it bit didn't. of your brain there. All right, Battle Hawks. Um, well, and I don't know if that. I, I feel like Colby, you're the only one following mm. UFL ratings. So yeah, but if <laughs> actually strong shit. first week. Yeah, strong actually, first week. Uh, Josh, if we can make a note for next week's show, we'll open with Colby's ratings review segment. Uh, that's, <laughs> well, that's make sure compare it to um, the women's college basketball yes, tournament. Yes. Uh, uh, well, well, dude, women's did better than NBA Finals, NHL, uh, World crazy. Series. Yeah, I mean they're fucking they're on another planet are, right now. Are yeah. we launching the women's college basketball experience? Yep. Yes. Noah Phoenix hosting. And Dude, oh, is he? Yes, no, I, I feel like we need at least one lady on the show, though. So we'll yeah. have to solve that problem. It, it's him and his sister. Oh, and they're, right, they're going to kill it. Not the queen of the degenerate. Not the queen of the TCE chat. All right, so we got the St. Louis Battle Hawks hosting the Renegades. The Battle Hawks are one of the teams we think will have a a bona fide home edge. The dome always helps that. Even Fake sellouts. Fake Kobe sellouts. The, the 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 they'll say they'll say the the top the top. It's a sellout live from live from the Battle Dome. Even though the entire second level will be empty as one of my comedy but, but shows. Kobe, right? They didn't sell tickets for the second level, so yeah. it is a sellout. But they didn't sell tickets because they know they can't sell tickets. Well, that doesn't matter. Caw cause the law. Caw. All right, Battle Hawks laying four. Although this number has, uh, it, it, since we wrote the number down, stretched out to five. A uh, little Battle Hawks action coming in. Total forty one and a half. Uh, money line one eighty for the Renegades. Who are, are? Are we just? Can we put a pin in it? Are they clearly one of the worst teams in the league? Minus two twenty coming back the other way for the Battle Hawks. Uh, this does feel, I, I think, in general, spring football. I'm going to look to take a lot of bounce back spots. We commented last week how a lot of the good home field advantages were playing road games this week. Boy, we're going to have nice opportunities to bet on these teams next week. I don't think any of us thought that, uh, really thought that the Battle Hawks were going to lose that game outright. Uh, speak for yourself. Uh, <laughs> uh, the Panthers were in my money line parlay. And yeah, this is interesting because I thought the Battle Hawks offense looked incredibly rough. But on the other side, do you really want to take Arlington, who looked horrible at home, no. uh, now on the road? Luis Perez on the road in a hostile Battle Hawks environment—that is a tough out for him. Uh, I mean, both teams were playing pussy ball. You know what I mean? You play oh, pussy boy. ball. You go up against a team that likes to run the ball and control the clock. You're going to lose. Um, but uh, no, I mean the play I think here is is Arlington. It's too many points. I think Arlington's actually the better roster. Uh, I also love the coaching edge. Anthony Beck can't couldn't coach himself out of a fucking paper bag. L l let alone <laughs> let alone uh, you know like Bob Stoops is is actually you know he did he does make adjustments. He does change. You know if, if he'll notice things on film and actually make adjustments. And I feel like Tony Beck will. Or, and Tony Meatball, <laughs> Anthony Beck, will will sit there and say, uh, you know, oh, we're just gonna keep the same game plan as last week, and uh, yeah. How'd you uh, how'd you think AJ McCarron look? Because I I check saw, down check down God. Uh, I saw some uh, were calling for uh, AJ McCarron to be benched, and by that I mean Adam Pelletier, uh, <laughs> the only one who was tweeting about UFL on my feed. Um, I have a quick update. Uh, yeah. Limits have been raised to five hundred dollars. Wow! <laughs> Do I go full uh, full NF full limit on uh, UFL football? They want they want you to give it back, Ryan. <laughs> I, I guess I'm scared to take Luis Perez and the points on the road. But the counter is: should this Battle Hawks team and we're picking it at four or five, Ryan? Five. The number's five. Okay. I I told you it was updated. I saw what you did there. No, I no, you, I, it was fine. still four on the shot. The uh, the audience will never know, but I saw what you did there, Sean. Let me help you. Anthony Beck had a fourth and in inches at midfield three times <laughs> last year, and he punted. 
That is my favorite part of the league, <laughs> and why, and why these unders are great. They're football I, guys. I couldn't tell you how many punts I saw in the opponents. Uh, side of the field. That is the most mind. There's a lot of things that doesn't make that that don't make sense about this league. But the fact that mm. every one of these coaches is like a ultra pussy. conservative <laughs> when it comes to it's, it's not, not every one. It's not every one. Most. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that that happens when you get a lot of uh, like like last year we watched a lot of the expo. You just put a bunch of players as coaches, especially defensive players. You know what I mean? Like Terrell Buckley and and, and uh, Rod the Woodson. Players, the yeah. players always want to go for it. You think they not would the be defensive the players? Ones. The defensive players are thinking, hey, if we pin them back within the twenty, uh, you know, we we can get a defensive touchdown here. I know yeah, how shitty the you quarterback don't, you don't play got, is. You don't got Ray Guy back there. You got some guy working <laughs> at a car wash who's now thinks he can pull off a coffin kick. What 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 do we? Talking about that, I, I, I just there. I, I you, you gave you me this go intel. For it. Go I, for it. I gave you this intel. Yeah, Ray Horton in the USFL with uh, the Pittsburgh Maulers last year would never go for it, but certain coaches do. I feel like Skip Holtz would. I feel like Bob Stoops would. They get it. The ones that don't get it, I feel like, are the unproven coaches, a la Anthony Beck. So have fun so, with 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 your play here. No, I'm I'm still going back and forth because I do think Luis Perez sucks as uh, mm. J Mark uh, from the UFL gambling. Podcast you got to remember, he out. hates him. He he, he hates him. He's, I think he might. He's he's a battle hawk homer. So I'm I'm watching. I'm keeping a close eye on him. I mean, but can we can we just talk about how McCarron's threw for like five point two yards of pass and and. Uh, Check down city and Perez was at least though in seven point six yards of completion. At least he's taking shots down the field. I do wonder if Perez and, and McCarron are that far apart. But the name brand of Mc, I think the home edge, the expected home edge, and the name brand of McCarron is making this line inflated. Because See, this I'm, is this is another problem. The bet when, the when bet you, split seventy seven percent on the Battle Hawks. Sean. When you Google UFL stats, they're like they're not e they're barely on the first page. I'm looking at the University of Florida's faculty statistics. <laughs> Come on, get someone over there who knows a little uh, uh, SEO. Uh, well, what's going on over here? And and, and I mean, and I, I just think, I just think it's an easy it's it's somewhat of an easy handicap with the points like. I understand maybe St. Louis with the crowd behind them wins the game, but these games traditionally are close. And you got to remember Arlington played Birmingham, Birmingham. Yeah, that's true. I think Birmingham is better team. than the Washington, the, the Washington Redskins. I think oh, they're a better wow. team than the Washington Redskins. <laughs> so, um, all right, I'm going yeah. Arlington yeah, Arlington and the points. I, I and of course under 41 and a half. Yeah. Uh, do I do I put two thousand dollars on UFL unders this weekend? <laughs> Why not? Yeah, I think it's going to be another thirty. Uh, I'm going to just predict every game is going to be seventeen fourteen. Uh, this one as well. All right, I just did it. <laughs> I just I like the over. It. I like the over in this one. Oh, of course. I just I just bet uh, twenty two hundred dollars on four unders <laughs> oh this this God. weekend. Kramer, uh, is my board low? Uh, I can turn it up a little bit. No, I don't know. Sounds it could be my headphones. I I would um. I I think what Col what swayed me is Colby's very Colby feels very strongly about the coaching edge. You you can hear yeah. it in his voice. No, that's a good point. Uh, uh, but also, I do think there is a like we we have to respect the spring quarterback. Uh, we are spring football guys, which by the way, uh, shirt coming soon uh, for the merch store. Spring football uh, guy. Yeah. Uh, I I think yeah I think we got to take Louis Luis Perez, a spring football legend. All right, so we're plus all on Arlington plus five. Colby incorrectly on the over forty-one and a half. Uh, why? I think it's one of the better overs to take. I think why like is, oh, stop. Yeah. <laughs> why? Both, is this, I think both are going to put up points. No, no, no. Yeah. The more that I shoot out, the more that I thought about this game, the more that I wondered what this kind of feels like when we took Michigan last week. Like, yeah, we don't think Michigan's very good, but why are they getting all these points? Yes. Well, exactly. I, 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 I thought Michigan's defense would dominate <laughs> the game. So please don't speak for me. All right. <laughs> I will never I will never speak for you. Uh hey, speaking of uh underdog fantasy, head over to underdogfantasy.com, use the promo code SGPN, get yourself a hundred percent deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Put out my uh I've been doing some uh underdog fantasy content. I don't know, maybe Josh can um pull my video highlighting my sweet dunks while I do the underdog fantasy read. No need to play the audio on it. But if you go over to my old X account, you can see at Sean T. Green. I'm walking you through the play. Gave you um, 
who was it? Jalen Green under twenty or lower twenty six and a half points. Not doing hockey. Clay Thompson higher uh, uh, three and a half three pointers made. He had seven. Jalen Green only at thirteen points. It ended up being a sweet sweet cash. Of course, underdogfantasy.com promo code SGPN. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see me about to get ready to slam down a sweet sweet dunk here. And reminder, it looks like uh, thanks to our own DJ Doc Sebastian, uh, Underdog is going to be offering some UFL fantasy projections. They have the column out there. Um, we will uh, tweet it out once once we get some live numbers. Colby, is there anyone you you seem to like some overs? But is there anyone uh, in particular you think maybe uh, maybe keep an eye on for the uh, Underdog fantasy when their number uh, drops? Is the best player. Uh, Anthony McFarland's the best player in this league. Oh, you cut it off right before my sweet dunk. Oh, I, yeah. I, uh, uh, you guys, sorry. let me give you let, let me give you a comparison. Um, even though they weren't different different positions. Uh w- I remember three years ago, Cavante Turpin was playing in the USFL, and instantly I think me and my brother were texting. Who the fuck is that? He is better than everybody on the field. He's in the he's NFL good. Like you just your eyes will tell you it. Your eyes will tell you it. Anthony McFarland should not to me. He's better than everybody in this league. They the the the, the San Antonio Brahmas don't use him correctly as far as the first game. Wade Phillips, who uh, started Tommy Maddox over John Elway or drafted Tommy Maddox when he had John Elway. <laughs> <laughs> also started Rob Johnson in the playoffs over Doug Flutie. He's That's true. I don't have the the confidence that he's going to acknowledge that. Hey, this guy's better than everybody in the league. Um, but I do think even with that, they they rushed him only I think like nine times last week, and he had one catch for like forty yards and a touchdown. It, whatever his value will be, take the higher than because he's faster than the whole league. It is funny when there's guys. I mean, it, it, I would say the other highlight from watching the week one uh, in terms of excitement was how excited they were for a uh, former Alabama linebacker and a uh, massive piece of shit, uh, Ruben Foster. <laughs> he should be in the NFL too, though. Like it oh. jumps off screens. He ju- he jumps off screen. It's like who is that's, that? That's how you know he's a huge piece of shit. He's. The, I wanted he's the not, I wanted he's, the Eagles to draft him. He looks so fun in college. It was just such like a reckless uh, linebacker. But apparently, <laughs> the announcers were so hard over a former first round pick. In the NFL. <laughs> I mean, he. There was a couple plays where he he took on like the like two or three guys, and I was like, "Good lord!" I was like, "He he does not belong in this it, league." You it know? reminded me of the uh, Aaron Donald retiring caused people to start like posting pictures, of videos of him and. There's that sweet video of him at Pitt where he tackles the read out, like he tackles the quarterback and the running back in the read option, and that's that's Reuben Foster playing spring football. Imagine just being a spring football guy. You're like trying to make it as a football player, and you got this this guy trying to fucking murder you on the other side. <laughs> I mean, I I mean, Sean, we again not to get, bring it back to the North Hollywood Rec League, but yes, there were times Sean and I were on a basketball court with guys who. Uh, Almost certainly, we're playing at some level of college ball. At some, you know, it, it, it wasn't safe for us. Re- Re- Reuben Foster looked like that kid from ECU the other, uh, yesterday, just destroying, <laughs> oh, destroying we... the the. Uh, I I have that. Should I, I upload that? East Carolina can, fan. Can, I mean, we don't. I, I have ever, it. The in t- if you haven't seen it, um, yeah. Hold on, know. hold on. So I got what? you. I got you. I got you. I'm I'm loading it right now. I'm, Talk for one second. I I'm. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I'm, I, I can talk for more than one second, but basically you got, I, I guess at ECU, they still have uh, issues uh, between the races and some white guys were trying to bully a black it's, guy. It's ready to play whenever you want. Um, <laughs> this was not at ECU. This was at ECU really? guys. He black won't guy. shake yeah. His yeah, you can, t- we don't need the audio, but basically what happens here, I'll, I'll narrate. The uh uh they they're like hey what's up man and he's just like fuck you motherfuckers <laughs> and then he just not, he, the guy with the blue shorts gets knocked out th- three separate times <laughs> it is a crazy <laughs> just go, open. but wait um, you do need the audio what are you talking about no you don't need the, I mean there's nothing it's just it's just this noise is, and, and no like, this is no, the one I did this is with the oh, one he oh, did I'm <laughs> sorry I'm sorry all right start from the beginning start from the beginning. <laughs> all right one more time Colby you didn't do a good job of setting that up I was more talking about the uh, so black guy, ECU guy, 
<laughs> NC State good guys. <laughs> Just a uh, guy getting their ass whooped to this song. I can watch this all day. <laughs> the sax, you know. <laughs> you know, I mean, the other black dudes are like, all right, what? Come on, guys. Like, you guys are getting your ass beat. You want to stop now? That dude's trying to shake hands after. <laughs> oh man, one guy got knocked out like three times. It was great. Well, let's talk. About but like we, so we know the 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 the, the black guy is currently you know an ECU guy, right? We think. the the no that was that was, I mean allegedly. Um, but I have been on a lot of college campuses. The first thing I saw when I saw that other crowd, I thought first my first thought was NC State. My second thought was Clemson. Hmm. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Loafers, boat yeah. shoes. I, I will say, and if you, at, I did, uh, there's some awesome still shots in that video, but one of the best <laughs> ones is the guy with the, after the black dude just catches the one dude on the chin after he says, the, fuck you. Right. It, after he, the, he goes, the, Hey, fuck you. The white, <laughs> the white bro with the sunglasses like comes in with like, he's kind of, he's holding a beer in a koozie. And he's kind of going to hit him with the beer can, but he drops the beer can and just like open hand smacks him. And it's like, oh man, like you, this is what's happened to the youth of America by not playing in the dirt. Yeah. They fight no, like no, little bitches. No one thought to tackle him. If you have seven on one, maybe. <laughs> but what my favorite guy is the guy vaping. They took him on one at a time. And the guy was just <laughs> ripped, just beating everyone's ass. That blue shorts guy is never going to be able to get a job ever. I mean, they said. Uh, he comes in for an interview. It's like, uh, excuse me, hey, sir. Wait, you, you look familiar. I swear, <laughs> yeah. I've seen you somewhere. No, 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 not me. No, no, I definitely. You ever been on that? No, 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 no. The guy yeah, vaping like, at the beginning no, who no. walks away is my favorite guy. He's like, no, I don't want any of this. Uh, uh, yeah, this looks a little. <laughs> One want- dude just stands there the entire time. Uh, you can head over at Gambling Podcast on X. Check out the video for hmm. yourself. Hey, you know who could use some healing and some rejuvenation? Um, all those dudes that got their ass kicked, they should head over to Unified Healing. Whether you're a world class athlete or a podcaster like myself, we all understand the importance of mental and physical well being, both of which uh, those guys are in trouble. Proper recovery for top notch performance. Again, these guys need recovery. Uh, again, that's why it's pretty awesome. Unified Healing is sponsoring this episode. Unified Healing is a new and super innovative global network of wellness centers powered by Energy Enhancement System or EE System. If you haven't heard of EE System yet, you'll want to listen up. This technology promotes wellness, deep relaxation, purification, and rejuvenation. Whether you're here in LA or hundreds of other locations across the globe, access to a center is easy and affordable. Again, interested in experiencing the EE system technology for yourself, go to unifiedhealing.com slash SGPN to learn more and find a center near you. That's U N I F Y D healing.com slash SGPN. No material testimonial on the unified healing website are intended to be viewed as medical advice or substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified healthcare provider with any questions you have made regarding a medical condition or treatment before undertaking a new healthcare regimen, including EE system. All right, and we're on Sunday now. Sunday, because we got we got to spread these games out as much as possible. I mean, is it a hot take to say that if you ran kind of some games overlapping each other, it wouldn't be the worst thing? Like no. take over the morning, take take over Saturday like back morning, to back. You know, give no, you, give you, you fifteen you, minutes to get your bets in. You only like uh, last year you had you know two leagues, so it was six you know sixteen teams, so you had a, a lot more games, but. Do one prime time every night, every night Thursday. Fr- or it doesn't have to be if you want to take a night off. Sa- the like final uh, final four Saturday, then put it on Sunday and Monday. It's just stupid. You're stupid. I would have just ta- attacked Saturday morning. Like go after the Premier League crowd. You'll win. People will watch football. Do nine a.m. and eleven thirty a.m. Or, tw- or noon, like like you did last week. That's it. But play two games each window. That's what I would do. Birmingham. And why you're putting Birmingham at these horrible time slots? Birmingham against Michigan on the road, 9 a.m. on Sunday, minus six and a half for Birmingham. Let me see if that's moved at all. Nope, still minus six and a half. 41 and a half. 
is the total that's moved up a tick. People are betting the over like donkeys minus 285 it's <laughs> for the stallions plus 230 for the Michigan Panthers. Panthers uh, excellent victory. Wow. Delightful story about a kicker. Uh, meanwhile, last Berman, time he had a kick was in high school, and then comes in, hits a sixty-four nope. yarder. They 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 supposedly got the timeout in to ice him. Then he just walks back out and nails another sixty-four yarder. How he, can you not like casually? Well, yeah, he casually drilled it uh, in the pre-icing, and then he's only on the team because the kickoff is from the twenty, and he's the kickoff specialist. He's got the big leg, so Colby, I'm sure, was about to tout how this kickoff actually produced this uh, epic. Not not only this kickoff TV story. Not only this kickoff, would, or yes, they they got him to do that, but also they had a nice return that set them up. There was not that much time on the clock. They had a decent return that set them up there. Uh, the the UFL kickoff, fantastic. You saw it. We didn't see a touchdown, but we saw a lot of big time returns this past weekend. It's fun watching the most, you know, athletic players have a chance to score. I will say, Colby, we are going to get to see the the new NFL kickoff with Cordero Patterson this season, so we might get some pretty exciting moments. I'm what? looking forward to that. I, I'll you say, like that, three I, yards. I, uh, Cordero Patterson is a is a man who make makes magic. All right, so Birmingham specifically. Shout out to the the Shark Dog himself. Uh, he he seems very angry that Pat McAfee, when talking to The <laughs> Rock, uh, kissed the XFL ring. Wants to point out repeatedly how much better uh, the USFL is. N- not really, just wants to show everyone how good the Birmingham Stallions are. Well, he was uh, right. They and and guess what? Uh, the 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 new quarterback on the roster, Adrian Martinez. He he looks like he'll be able to do some useful things. You know um, what it's like though? It's like watching a it's like watching North Dakota State or South Dakota State yeah. play in, in the FCS and people talk shit like someone talks shit, like say another conference in college football talks shit about the FCS, and you're like, dude, do you watch the games? Because they have studs everywhere. They would come up, like if you put North Dakota State in the Mountain West, they would fuck up the Mountain West. You know what I mean? Like most of the Mountain West. Um that's that's to me like I would compare it to that because Scooby Wright's got a point. I think like if anyone watched it, it it's it's just you the quality of play was that much better. Yeah, I mean with that debate aside, which I I I do happen to agree. I think that the USFL was better. Uh, I also think that Birmingham again the the system of just laying the points with Birmingham until someone proves us wrong. <clears throat> Is is all I'm gonna do. They they looked amazing mm-hmm. as a team. They're gonna have multiple options at the quarterback position again. Uh, they're loaded at every position. What do you mean? Didn't I thought Corral played most of the game? <laughs> Through two interceptions. Adrian Martinez got some time. He looked effect. He looked like he's gonna be able to do stuff with his legs. They're they're gonna be. I mean, they were a team that was held down for a little bit. You blink your eyes. Uh, they've won a game by 13 points. I I think. They did have 409 total yards. I guess my concern is uh, Michigan's run defense was pretty good. Held, Michigan's uh, defense in general was yeah. was nasty. I thought. I thought. I think they're the best That's defense fine. in the league. But uh, I'm not going against Birmingham. No, that makes sense. I mean, look, but Birmingham returned to like 22 players off of last year's roster. But they, these aren't I mean, big rosters. Held, St. So. Louis went 20 attempts, 62 rushing yards. They held them to 3.1 yards. Per attempt, I think if they can do that and turn over Matt Corral a couple times, um, which the Renegades were able to do, now you put the Stallions on the road. <laughs> I think I'm making a decent case for this Panthers team again. Stallions were on the road last week. It was they, they played once last year in, in uh, Ford Field. Uh, that was the one time they met, and the Stallions won by 14. But I, I, I'm with you, Sean. I think this defense for Michigan is way better. So yep. when when the other USFL teams went away. The rest of the USFL teams got to draft, or the, re- the rest of the league that got to draft uh, USFL players, and I, I think Michigan's wide receivers are way better now. EJ Perry still struggled, but he didn't know he was starting until a couple of days. Their starting quarterback retired like the week of the game. Um, Pussy. So, so and they have Brian Lewerke. I I do wonder if I mean to me that they, they, they could still like stay in this game with EJ Perry if they don't throw as many times as I threw through a, a, a week ago, but I think they can stay in this game just because the, the defense is that good. Nakua's brother 
is a stud in the, in the secondary there. Um, 17, 14 game stallions win Panthers cover this one. The under is, Dog is, in is the, under. The, the under's hitting heavy in this one. Kramer, Let's, what are you doing? Oh, I, I I'm not fading Birmingham. A spe- Michigan played St. Louis. St. Louis might suck, Colby. You're you're That's on true. the tip of that spear. But they do have a talented all like their receivers and, and allegedly their quarterback is known as a, a be- one of the better spring quarterbacks. I, I would push back a little bit on that, but hmm. th- that's the narrative at least. Um, he just had a full debate with himself <laughs> answering yeah. the question. That was beautiful. Well, I, right, I, I, I like th- they do have a really good defense. Michigan's defense was yeah, super but, impressive. Yeah. But what? But but you're but you as if you had to, like you think the Battle Hawks might be crap. Like if the Battle Hawks are the worst team in the league, would that no, be they're surprising? not. Houston's the worst team in the league okay. by far. By far, I think. Yeah. I, Battle Hawks might not be good, and I think they're 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 inflated because they have a guy that people remember from Alabama. All right, last one. So basically, that uh, the Discord doesn't get a, a four pack this week. We're gonna disagree on a pick because you guys forgot about the Birmingham's the best team by a mile system. All right, one p.m. on Sunday on the West Coast, Houston Roughnecks and the DC Defenders. We will have beer snakes, DC lemon Lake. party, baby. DC, no, 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 <laughs> don't, don't, not lemon party. No, 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 no. I, no, I, you, uh, I heard, invented the lemon party. I right? heard that uh, <laughs> the uh, a tuner uh, is something that goes on at a lemon party. <laughs> a D, D, DC <laughs> defenders lane five minus two forty on the money line. Houston Roughnecks plus one ninety five. Forty one is the total. I, I, th- there's two sides of the coin here. I, uh, I want very much to lay. I wanted very much to bet on DC in their first home game. Yes. So I think there'll be a nice uh, home edge there. Uh, I also, I, I, I also, I, I don't know what to Jordan. Tam, let, can we, should we talk about Jordan Tamu? Yes. Uh, uh, I don't, I don't put it all on him though. That outfits of line that guys the, kind like, of overrated. Yeah, well, I and, mean, and Houston's defense against this offensive line for DC, uh, they can fuck them up. I mean, that is going to be interesting to watch because, like, to me, DC, I thought had the best offensive line in the entire XFL last year. When I watched them last week, I was like, "Whoa, their offensive line is fucking horrible." I don't even put all of it on Tayamu because he was getting blasted. I I thought that they the the problem is Houston's offense is pretty bad. Is that Memphis's defense though with uh, Carnell yeah. Lake? You know, like that's that's yes. what we're figuring out. But I, I look, Greg Williams blanked blank San Antonio on the offensive side of the ball the second half. I if you look at that, I know that the score says what it is. We touched on this earlier where San Antonio won by what was it, fifteen or whatever? Yeah. But uh there was only a fake. seventeen yard advantage to San Antonio and what fifty of it came on a fucking fake fake punt. Yeah, you're right. Um I, I think in. DCU or, or DCU. What am I talking about? DC is going to. Uh, I dis- am a East Carolina <laughs> fan. <laughs> I am an East Carolina fan. I think DC DC is going to fuck them up with that home <laughs> crowd behind them. I think they they're also going to they're going to figure a few things out. They cut the guy. They cut the guy who spit on the player. Drawing a blank on his name uh, right now. Colby would have promoted yeah. him. He would have been. I would have. Hey, you. Hey, you guys. You guys are pro spitting. You. You guys interviewed Bill Romanowski. You spit about thirty <laughs> fucking players in the NFL. The so only, don't don't uh, run from it. The only uh, the only spitting I approve of is the dragon. Um, who, UAB. Who is it? The UAB a Komodo dragon, dragon that, that, that the Komodo they dragon <laughs> spits acid. I'm down for that kind of spit. Did, did Gene Delance is the name of the player? Did he? Uh, did he pl- tell me he played college? Gene, imagine getting spit on by a guy named Gene. Jeez, uh, <laughs> God. Now did, and that, that, that and and uh, Daniel's talking about Ruben Foster. I, you know, that's something to watch. He might not play. Really, what happened? I mean, the guy is perpetually injured. That's a big reason why yeah. he's not in the league. Uh, and he's a psycho. But we can turn a blind eye to that in the National Football League. Uh, if you can stay healthy, but I mean, his career started off with like crazy shoulder injuries and then ACL. Uh, he actually, I was Googling him while we we're talking about him. He worked out for the dolphins this year. Uh, didn't get signed. I don't think. And, and yeah, da- he's banged up and David's co- co- completely correct here. DC defenders outdraw the commanders fans because, mm. because Half that stadium is going to be the, you know, FedEx, half of it's the opposing team every, every so are day. We, 
<laughs> are we sure we want to? So I agree. I think you have to lay the points. I, th I think you have to lay, lay it? it with the, yeah. I think you have to lay it. Oh, I'm taking Houston. I, I like the defense. I like the matchup. Mm. I'm uh, still, I'm still leaning into the idea of the defenses being ahead of the offenses. I think, you know, week four, week three, where some of these offenses have a little mo mojo, then you can talk me into it. But I, I don't know if this DC defenders O line warrants laying five points, even at home. This is why I, I, I like that angle is taking DC. It, it, you know, is Reggie Barlow, I think, will. I'll put him in the stoops category. This is a guy that good won coach. a very good coach in the MIAC, also on the D2 level. Like he is going to make adjustments on what he what he saw week one, where you know I think on the other side of it, Curtis mm -hmm. Johnson is is a question mark to me. Like he's a question mark. Um, so yeah, DC all day. And uh, this one I also do think we go with. Ah, I don't know actually. I think I think we might because I could see garbage time points for Houston. But actually, give me the over here. Give me three out of four overs. Kramer, talk me into DC. You're on DC. I would say that we were very high on Reggie Barlow last year mm. as a concept because he came from real coaching. He wasn't one of these guys. I mean, it's a good it's a good comparison here because the the Houston Roughnecks coach, he was mostly a positional coach. I think he was maybe the head coach um of Tulane Daniel, and he was Daniel, horrible. Daniel, he was Daniel horrible. in the chat no. uh kick a field goal every time Barlow. Yeah, I'm stay I'm sticking with Houston. Uh, but I, but I think the the key is I think we're going to see that DC defense is going to be absolutely uh, very tough at home and they're going to score enough points to cover this number. It's going to be real gross. Like, so what do you think? Twelve nothing, uh, twelve three, some sort of baseball score. No, I think DC is going to. I I'm actually you ready for this defensive touchdown by Greg Williams in this Ooh. game? Um, yeah, I think I like it. Let's go lay the points. Yeah, I I, I think I got something like thirty one to. Thirty-one to thirteen, or something. My my point was going to be, yeah, the DC coach has been a head coach for a very long time, at, and, a, at, and a and a good one, lower, and a yeah, good lower one. levels. Yeah, yeah. So to Colby's point, that element of being able to kind of early season read and react, uh, yeah, coaching matters, and there's definitely, I mean, the how were the gamblers last year? Horrible. Yeah. Oh, so sa small sample size, but Sean's taking the horrible coach. We're all taking the under. No, no Colby's I'm taking the over. The over. Oh, he has three overs this Colby, week. Colby, you're not. <laughs> I stop it. You no, should have no, went no, two no. and two. You just said it yourself with the San Antonio game. I, I didn't. The no, players sometime, spitting. It's sometimes the ball bounces and well, you get. Well, also on the other side, you did get a uh, a center catching a uh, fake punt for a mm -hmm. touchdown. Yep. For your over, Colby. Uh, right. Fair, but the Birmingham fair. game certainly should have went over. Should should have definitely went over. Look at the yardage in that game compared to any other game. Yeah, but that's part of the why these guys are in spring football. They fuck up in the red zone. Yep. They have inner opportunity ah, turnovers. They're not. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, come on. Part of the reason their coaches don't know when to go for two or three. Dude, they're, Matt, they're Matt super Corral conservative. Matt threw a pick on a wide receiver screen where it hit the fucking wide receiver right in the hands. Yeah, uh, he's Matt yeah. Corral. He's cursed. No, I'm just saying, like that. That nine out of ten times, actually seventy nine <laughs> out of eighty times, he catches that. So. It is what it is. I love these stats. Seventy nine <laughs> out of eighty. It, it, this is one of those. Not ninety nine out of a hundred. No, like, nah, because you, you you drop another one somewhere in that next twenty. <laughs> this is one of those. I, yeah. I do love how uh, dialed in Colby is uh, the projection there. All if, right, time for a lock <laughs> and our dog Kramer. Lock and dog. What do you got? Uh, if my aunt had balls, she'd be my uncle. Uh, uh well, I I think we have to. So, ah, uh, man. The, the, Bir Birmingham, DC. The only game I'm not, I, I don't feel certain on is the Arlington one. Mm. I think I, 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 I completely have uh, aligned with Colby on the coaching edge with that one. But I, you know what? I'll go lock Memphis. I uh. don't. I think this is a bad reaction. Um, oh shit! How do I have a no? You know, make Memphis my dog, please. Okay. I realized I don't have another appropriate dog <laughs> then. Uh, and I think I think for the lock I have I think the laying the points with DC uh, Birmingham a close second I'll uh, I'm gonna go ma make some max bets on those as well. Lock it up for me and the Memphis Showboats. 
uh, catching two points at home for my money line dog. I'm going to go uh, Arlington Renegades once again. They mount up and take <laughs> down the St. Louis Battlehawks. Battlehawks, I feel like a bit of fraudulent. Shouldn't be laying five points, even at home. So give me Arlington on the money line. Quick update. Uh, I actually limit limit of one thousand per side. Oh wow! Totals five hundred. Oh uh, do I? Is that? This feels like too much. I can't. That's too much. <laughs> Colby, what do you got? Uh, Sean, we both hit on the Michigan Panthers as dogs, right? Yes. Arlington's going to beat them. Arlington is going to beat St. Louis. I think they're the better team. Ooh, let's now, go. It's Should a I, it's sh- it's all right, let's it's a it. it's a tough environment, but. I think they can beat them. I think they're like, like I said, I think Anthony Beck's coaching always leaves points out there. Yeah. Bob Stoops will capitalize on the weaknesses that he saw from week one. He'll address those uh, and there'll be a much better version of themselves the uh, week two. And they're also not playing Birmingham. Uh, the lock is DC minus five Houston's offense yeah. coming into the season before they ever played a game. We thought they'd be the worst offense. After week one, they were clearly the worst offense. I have all the numbers here, and and what's crazy is they were substantially like I'm talking uh, comparing them to DC. Even they're about a, they only had 174 yards of offense. Now maybe some of that is Memphis's defense. I also think it's personnel. Uh, Guantanamo Bay is not a great quarterback there. I think uh, Greg Williams, like I said, pick watch out for a strip sack touchdown, pick six touchdown. DC puts it on them. Lay the five. Lay the five. All right. All right. I fi- I, I now have uh, roughly forty five hundred dollars on the UFF UFL this weekend. <laughs> Check in on me this weekend. I'll I'll be. I don't know. I'll be Kramer's s- gonna be sweating it out. <laughs> and uh, hey, I know I'm at a. I got a soccer game around nine a.m. on Saturday, so we'll be double dipping. A little two screen experience. Just a reminder. Uh, shout out to last week's Patreon winner, Roy Olvinson. Uh Congrats to you. Got four T-shirts of your choice. Roy Orbison, old <laughs> singer. Olovson, O L O V S O N. Uh, this hey, week's Patreon pick and prize is uh, your choice of sweats from the merch store. The SGPN sweats, perfect sweats to sweat your bets. Uh, promo code madness, 15% off everything, or maybe win a free pair in the Patreon pick em contest, sports gambling podcast.com slash Patreon to get involved today. I'm actually wearing them once again. We have the zebra prints, oh, yeah. uh, which are out. just insane. Get them out! I, I, I mean, these are these are battle hawk esque. Uh, <laughs> even though I'm on the renegades, I'm telling you, these are some of the most uh, comfortable sweatpants that have ever been made. And I told them, let's get some other like regular styles as well, because some guys might get scared off the zebra print. Oh, what do you mean? Well, not uh, just some alphas can pull off the zebra mm. print, some can't. Uh, you decide if you're that alpha. Uh, Another quick update. Sure. Um, I I moved every number, <laughs> A- every every total and every side moved. Oh, great! That's why you gotta. That's After why you gotta, I put in my action, that's why you gotta subscribe. YouTube.com/slash oh. Sports Gambling Podcast. Get in on the lines before the UFL whale himself, Kramer, moves the number. <laughs> inject that inject that CLV in my fucking veins, <laughs> right into my throbbing dick. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. For Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean Stack of the Money Green. He's Ryan. Still want to know what a tuner is. Kramer, let <laughs> it ride. Oh, what a dunk. Sean Stegg.